So that's when we're going to be connecting to a JSON file and retrieving the data from the JSON file using an AJAX request to that file and then outputting the contents on the page using the XML HTTP request. So on load, once we've got the data, we're loading it and then we're outputting it to the page. So we're going to create a function that's going to use first the object as a J JavaScript object and constructing the way to output on the page. And then next we're going to make the request to the content as JSON and output it the, to the page the same way as we did as it was within a JavaScript object. So using the JSON parse method is going to allow us to convert a string value into a usable JavaScript object. And that's where we can use that data and output it onto our web page. This lesson we're going to be connecting to a JSON file and outputting the contents of the JSON file onto the web page. So JSON is a way to get data. It's a formatted data structure that's easy to read. It's human readable and it's works the same way as JavaScript objects. So ideal, it's an ideal way for getting data and then using them within JavaScript. So within a JavaScript object, if we were to get all of that data content, and I'll just give it a name of data, and we'll output the content as an array of items, and these items are objects. If I output that data into the console, we can then use the data in the JavaScript code. So the same way we're going to be using the JSON data. And when we open up within the console, we see that there's three items in the array. Each one of those items has a first and a last name. So the data structure is going to make it the same so that we can easily loop through all of the items in the array and output those values. Let's create a function to output the values onto the page. And this is going to be a function that we can also use to output the data once we return it back from the JSON request. So output data, and that's just going to be the function that we're going to run in order to output the content. Uh, right now, we'll just take in the value of data, and we'll run the function that's going to use the data content. And maybe we'll call it uh, vals, so it's different than what we've named the data value here. And this is going to be an array, so it's expecting the same format for the object. So we want to loop through each one of those. And then each one of these items, we can get the item, we can get the index value, and then we can do something with those values within the code. So for now, we'll just output both of those, so the element item and the index value. So that returns back the object and the index value. So we don't necessarily need to use the index value if we're just focused on the contents of the element. So right now within the output data, we're outputting all of that content into the console, and this is data structured as a JavaScript object. So that's going to make it really easy to select the first name. And then we can also select the element last name as well. So using the property keys. So that just outputs them into the page. And this is actually just the same that we want to output within the main container. So let's construct an HTML. So construct an HTML variable. I'll just have it as a blank HTML. And we can create the elements for the page, or we can create them as elements and then add them onto the main container. And that can just be done within the main HTML content. So there's two different ways that we can do this. And I'll just show you both of those quickly. So whichever one you works best for you, you can use. So this is going to be getting those same values of the elements and put it within the template literal format. So that's the dollar sign and the curly brackets to break into the JavaScript code. And then for the last part, we set the inner HTML of that as HTML. And then this also gives us an opportunity if we want to add in some HTML tags here. So as it loops through the values, it's going to load them onto the page. So now we see that we've got the JSON data is being loaded onto the page. And this is all done with JavaScript. And the other way to do that is to, I'll copy this function and we'll create a second function that's going to do it within the creating the elements on the fly within the web page. So as we loop through, we just would have to select and clear out the main HTML so that there's no content in there. So that will clear out the default content from the HTML. And it's just going to be a blank 
string. And then as we loop through, we've got the contents that we want to place in the element. Uh, so we want to create a div and using the document create element and creating a div. So this creates a div on the page. And in order to add it to the page, we select the parent and then append the div to the page. And then within the div, we can set its content. So the div in our HTML is going to contain this content. And we don't need to wrap it with the element as this is automatically going to be set and done. And we can remove out that last line. So this will effectively do the same. But the benefit of doing it this way is that you can do a little bit more with the elements. So if you want to add click events, those elements are already selected as objects. So it's going to make it a little bit easier to add it on the page. You can also update and add in the index plus one and use the dollar sign to bring it into the JavaScript value. So that way we can have some numbers there to indicate which items. And then as we're selecting the elements, we've got more options to what we want to do with them. So if we want to update the style of the element, you can do different colors. So setting the color up as blue or whatever you want to do to add it to the element. And this is just updating the style property of the element. So now let's take this JavaScript and bring it out of the JavaScript object. And we're going to load it into a from the JSON file. So we can take the data object and I'll move it to the bottom because it's going to be updating this. We're going to get this content dynamically from the code. So we don't need to output data. So just uh, remove that. And we want to connect to a JSON file using the XM, X, XXR object. So create the XHR object. And that's going to be the new XML HTTP request. And then tracking it. So, so let's set it up and send the XHR and open the request. So using the get method and getting the content from the URL. And then within the XHR send, we want to send the request. Then here, let's just add in the on load. So the on load event. So what we want to happen whenever the content loads. And for now, we're going to load that content into the console. So we'll take the XHR response text and we'll just load it into the console for now. So open up the console and click. So there's our data object. And this is not usable yet because this is within a string format. So if we want to make it within a usable data object, let's uh, set up a variable called data and then using JSON parse, because we already know the structure is within a JSON format. So it's going to make it really easy to parse through that. And then within the console, let's uh, see what we have for the data. And this will use JSON parse, which is a JavaScript method, and it will parse through a string representation of a JSON data or JavaScript object and parse it into a usable JavaScript object. So let's take a look at that. And now we've got a usable JavaScript object. And we can actually pass this into the output values. So just as we saw before, when we had the value as a JavaScript object, and we were able to output the contents on the page, this should do the same thing where we're outputting, we're looping through the results within data, this is going to be an array of objects. And as we iterate through, we're able to select the data and then output that data on the page. And this is just outputting it in blue, you can output it in red, you can update some of the style properties as needed. So go ahead and try it out within your own application, connect to a JSON file, make sure your file is properly JSON structured, and also the items, the objects that are contained as items within the array, so that it can loop through them and easily select them by the property names, make sure that they're all the same. The structure needs to be the same in order for this to work. And this also needs to be a proper JSON file using the double quotes and assigning to the property either a string number or Boolean. 
or other arrays and objects being assigned to those property values.